Kubernetes beta feature ephemeral containers. From the past, what we know is a pod means a multiple containers. We know init container and app container from the CKA, CKAD and CKS background, right? And whenever pod starts in that state, these two container will start. And if any of the container will fail, then pod will fail. That's the basic principle what we know. And whenever we wanted to go inside of this container, once it is started, once it is started, then you can go inside the container and do verify all these things. But here, today's topic is ephemeral containers. So, first of all, ephemeral containers. So, first of all, just let's see what is ephemeral. Ephemeral means lasting for a very short time lasting for a very short time and this is a telugu meaning and if you go the just hindi just curious alpakalik kshana bangur right and alpayu and alpajivi these are the four meanings are given so and you get it what exactly ephemeral means right so here the today's topic is ephemeral containers so as we see just now pod one has uh, two containers and on the pod start these two are started all good and i wanted to check these containers starting failed or some issue happened by using a kubectl debug you will dynamically inject a container which is called a ephemeral container then dynamically inject what you will do dynamically inject and identify debug troubleshoot the issues and as soon as you type exit then immediately this ephemeral container will fail delete that's what the the meaning is also ephemeral means lasting for a very short time means as long as you use with kubectl debug and i'm debugging this part with debugging what this is a container different this is a image different ephemeral container i wanted to use as a busy box so busy box will be injected dynamically and you will do whatever upon the exit this will delete so you get it what exactly ephemeral container how it works in high level now ephemeral container so it's currently in the beta feature right uh, just go to the google and search for ephemeral containers if you search here kubernetes.io and uh, there is a github as well ephemeral containers if you look at the github then there is a this is a github page as well right and this is a ephemeral container specific now it's currently is in the beta feature that's what the and as we seen in the last lecture that beta feature means alpha beta or the release stages and beta is just before the general availability and ephemeral containers are by default enabled in 1.23 if you are using a older versions you can you have to enable manually right and which is clearly given in the feature gates so if you go to the here kubernetes.io documentation and future gates just search future gates just you will end up here and just control f and here eph ephemeral see ephemeral containers beta version right that's what i'm trying to say here now as we see release stages alpha beta and general availability so it's still it's not released yet so far and it's still in a beta right? and it will release in a 1.25 uh, now 1.23 is already enabled by default that means i have a kubernetes cluster two node kubernetes cluster 1.23.5 that means it's already enabled need not to do anything if it is a 1.22 then you have to enable manually how you enable the manually kubelet level this is a cube adm configuration file or kube api server level we know that kube api server.yaml file hyphen hyphen feature hyphen gates equal to ephemeral containers equal to true it's a one word and camel case 
and which is there in the documentation as well right here hyphen hyphen feature gates equal to and if you wanted to enable a multiple feature gate just a comma separated you have to enable that's what the will enable and in a visually this is how you will do if you edit the cube api server configuration file now next so ephemeral containers we understood high level but why let's say there is a python application this is python docker image multi stage docker image build first stage is a python slim image taken and copied the application directories etc and the second level there is a google's distroless image it have was taken and finally python application is built and same likewise node js docker image they taken a some source image and run p run npm ci only production and distroless image taken so and this a golang it is also same here distroless image is nothing but it's a google is created right let's go to the google distroless images and just you will end up in a one github page right this is a distroless image distroless image is basically only application and runtime dependencies that's it means here my python application what i need for python application just a runtime that's it right no other things are required node js means node js runtime golang means golang runtime java means java runtime dot net means dot net right so if you do that this will be a super secure there are no utilities nothing is there in this particular images right and if you go on to go inside the container and try to do the curl or any command it's not going to work only application will work so that's so i would say i would say it's a super secured image so whenever you are working such kind of images in a production and you wanted to troubleshoot how you troubleshoot impossible right that's what the ephemeral containers will help here now this is a pod and some python application which is built using a distroless you can't go inside kubectl execute if you go inside it won't allow if it is allow also nothing you can't do anything apart from ls right ls or cat only two commands will work let's consider and you wanted to troubleshoot or this is crashing or after 5 minutes it's crash and you wanted to check how you check ephemeral container will be helpful by using kubectl debug command whenever as soon as you do the kubectl debug ephemeral container will create what kind of a container it is here busy box you can give anything whatever but why you are giving this image by using this you can this ephemeral container will run as a privileged mode and you can completely troubleshoot this particular container process everything if you know the linux more maybe you can troubleshoot more right that's what the it is purpose now as soon as you exit it will delete that's we seen now ephemeral containers all good and what is the major purpose first interactive troubleshooting yes in the previous we see that this is a very hardened container and we wanted to troubleshoot right then this is running in the production and we wanted to really troubleshoot in the production or same container you use it in uat and you can troubleshoot that's a one number two is kubectl execute is not sufficient so here kubectl execute when you will do use this container is successfully running then only you will go inside the kubectl execute but if the container itself is not running how you use right how you troubleshoot that's what the this right container crash yes if container is cr crashing you won't be able to write unless kubectl logs kubectl describe that's it or kubectl events but how you really go inside the container and verify if ephemeral containers will help now container image whenever any container doesn't have any debugging utilities means let's say there is a docker image called nginx hyphen distroless thanks to this guy he uploaded this image i wanted to run kubectl run pod name as a web hyphen hyphen image right and i paste the image right and my this pod is created say kubectl get pod hyphen w 
and it's running right cube ctl get pod yes it's running correctly right now i will try to go inside this pod right then it's showing throwing me an error i cannot go inside why because this particular pod is created by using a distroless images google distroless images google is given a some of the distroless images where you can use it as a, a base image so that it's completely hardened image highly secured images that's what the i'm trying to say here so e, these are the scenarios you can use the ephemeral containers now ephemeral container what is so special about that one thing is ephemeral containers are different from the other containers so here as soon as you exit is ephemeral container will delete automatically that's a one second is ephemeral container won't auto rest never auto rest restart just you exit it will go away that's it now this distroless container doesn't have any open ports liveness probe readiness probe etc and this ephemeral containers are immutable so resources are setting is not allowed it will internally it will take care of the resources so all these points are taken from the official documentation so here this is the documentation you go and read it all the points are there right uh, this are the one now in kubernetes another concept called share process namespace in a pod this is a pod definition and pod name is nginx and two containers here container one is nginx and container two is a shell which is a busy box pod here if i specify share process namespace equal to true in a pod level then these two containers will be able to see and share the file system and the process as well right and by you have to specify some of the linux capabilities etc then only it will be able to share then how uh, it will share by using a kubectl attach command means here this is a pod definition which is called a web web and it has a container one nginx container two is busy box pod and i specified share process namespace equal to true container one is this container two is this right whenever i say share equal to true and specify the security context capability etc then it will share the process and file system and it will be visible second if it is any of the container is like a sidecar container for the logging etc we use for in the production then you can troubleshoot and debug by using what kubectl attach so in order to work this kubectl attach you need to set this security context capabilities linux capabilities and other uh, mandatory uh, dependencies you have to set so the command is kubectl attach and pod name which is a web hyphen it interactive hyphen c means container c2 here the c2 so what exactly it's doing is kubectl attach attach to a process which is already running inside a existing container means here c2 is already running in this particular c2 it will attach the process that's why it's on. and here hyphen c you are c2 so maybe you have a three containers yes you can specify any container you can and do this so here only the process only there is no contain new container is getting created another point is if you don't specify hyphen c and specify annotation as a my default container is c2 then just kubectl attach web means automatically it will attach to the c2 that's how the kubectl attach will work and go to the documentation here process namespace sharing link in the ephemeral container and here when you scroll down here this is a pod definition file which i have taken and keep it so you now what i will do is here the same uh, yaml file i have right and i will just copy here copy path i'll go to the kubernetes cluster 
right and nothing is running at the moment say kubectl apply ifnf and by the way this yaml file if you look at here annotation i have added and share process namespace and c1 this is a container one and this is a container two and this capabilities are set if you remove these capabilities it's not going to work that's a dependency for the kubectl add and this is a must share process namespace otherwise kubectl attach won't work now now it's a enter right now pod is created and go to the documentation is the same thing what is this one right so here kubectl attach and if you wanted to know the commands just do the kubectl iphone attach h and all the examples will be given are there right and kubectl get pod here now see here two container right the kubectl attach and here in interactive way to whom we are attaching is a pod called a web right web pod and hyphen c what is the container name here i wanted to container name is c2 right here just specify c2 so this is how you will be able to enter inside the ps aux you will be able to see this the process pid1 pid10 and other things and if you are linux master then you can troubleshoot from here and debug and etc right and the both the process are sharing here and here if you look at here right a uh, process number 10 and process number um, 41 and process number 48 so now i am in a second container right i can kill the first which is a nginx right here if you look at the yaml first one is a nginx second one is a c2 so now i am here this location right and i can go and heal kill right say kill hyphen h u p and what is the id i wanted to kill this is a number 10 so this way you can just kill it and then ps a u x right so again it's so likewise you can just uh, you can check as well say head right and proc right and what is the process id it's a number 10 right proc hyphen 10 and root at c nginx and then nginx configuration so what i am trying to do is here <coughs> first of all i will correct this head uh, um, here head here what i am doing is by using this process 10 from the busybox container i am trying to look at the nginx configuration of another container here so from here i am trying to check the this particular container so that's how i can uh, check that and if i exit that then now clear kubectl get pod yes you will see the same two containers so this is how you can check uh, basically process namespace uh, sharing and here the same example whatever the command i put here everything is here right and uh, understanding about the namespace sharing you can with the pid no longer if if your container doesn't have any pid one then and container has a visible process visible and file system so this is the what the key consideration so now why we are talking about this process namespace right with this particular a formal container because if you share process namespace whenever you are working with the formal containers then it will be a, a very good practice to troubleshoot and debug that's what the means you will enable but you won't be using a kubectl attach you will be using a kubectl debug so here kubectl attach is one point is not always bash uh, so anything this will work kubectl attach so maybe you guys may be thinking about that what is this kubectl attach and execute and debug what is the difference here so first is kubectl execute we know we can go inside a container right now kubectl attach as we just seen process will be attached to a running container which is may not be the bash anything that's what them and for this the mandatory requirement is this is the what the mandatory requirement and some of the linux capability etc some dependencies are there now and kubectl debug 
and kubectl debug is specific to the formal container which will be dynamically an image will be injected inside the pod so that you can debug troubleshoot etc right now use cases and demo so let's now if you look at the kubectl debug command which will be used for the formal container which is a today's topic right so here is the formal containers and there is a debug pods using a formal container right here so total by using a kubectl debug three ways you can utilize number one debug existing pod so just now some time back i have show you an example which is this particular distroless image where you won't be able to go inside the pod right such kind of a pods are crashing how you debug so this is a one of the use case second say one pod is running in the production and i don't want to debug i i want to debug but i don't want to inject the another container inside which is a very sensitive pod let's consider so wow, how you will do so you will exactly cloning that pod and then debugging right so you are just copy paste cloning and debugging that's the second use case third say node right so here kubectl get node hyphen over so here one master node and one worker node say i have a 10 worker nodes out of that one worker node is somehow some problems so how do i check because i have to go go inside the ssh and do the everything right do the troubleshoot debugging so if you can debug by using kubectl debug of a, a node yes these are the three different use cases now let's look uh, one by one yeah the first one uh, say this is a pod one and you will be creating a pod by using a pos 3.6 now i will create the pods so i will come here kubectl run i'll say pod one and hyphen hyphen image what is the image here and go to the documentation this is the image pos right uh, so i'll copy here and the latest version is pos 3.6 what i know um, yeah so pos 3.6 and i'll just mention restart equal to never right now i'll create it so now kubectl get pods right the pod one is running now if you look at the kubectl execute hyphen it in interactive way i wanted to go inside the pod 1 right what happens is this is throwing me an error why because this is a, a distroless image so it's impossible say if i wanted to troubleshoot this particular pod then kubes by using a kubectl debug right i can troubleshoot this particular container so that the so here i wanted to inject the busy box pod how to do that kubectl debug right and what i wanted to debug pod 1 in interactive way right that's what the in interactive way i wanted to debug hyphen hyphen image with what image i wanted to debug i wanted to debug with a busy box image which is 1.35 35 36 is there i think uh, for the latest hyphen hyphen now i wanted to debug image but what is the target i am doing target means what is a target container so here my pod name is pod1 container name is also pod1 right say if i do this and press enter right i will i am inside of this particular pod with the busy box now i can do anything if i am a linux master i can i can trace and everything i can do that so and i am in a completely in a privileged mode so it's completely i can trace and everything i can debug this is the number one use case and uh, and if i go exit and clear kubectl get pod and kubectl say describe pod and pod 1 you look at here containers right this is the pod 1 so first container is a pos container default and ephemeral containers here and debugger 
I given a busy box, it automatically assigned a name as a debugger something something something. And what is the state is he is here is a completed, terminated state. So because I have debugged, right? So here and the debugging is also basically here is all the everything it's uh, mentioned here. So in the events. Yes, I attach a debugger. Say if I open a once again a debugger. Say let's see. I want it. I am opening another time debugger, right? And it's came P S A U X. Then you will be able to see. Net start. Anything, any of the commands you use, and just go exit, right? And now kubectl describe pod pod one. You will see two debuggers. first pod first container first debugger and second debugger so here two times this particular pod has been debugged and you will be able to identify the time and etc everything this is the the first use case where you can leverage the debugging of existing container if it is running in a production this is a very useful now second one is debugging with the copy of a pod so in the previous case we have attached right so here you will be creating a one pod with pod 1 with image is a busy box so let's create that kubectl run pod 1 with the image is a busy box 1.35 restart equal to never hyphen hyphen sleep one day so this is a command i am passing and sleep for one day and just it will continuously run so kubectl get part now the busy box pod is running here my busy box pod is running now i wanted to debug this particular pod by creating another copy of it rather than injecting inside i will be creating a new pod called pod1 hyphen debug and then here i will pass an ubuntu image so how that's how we'll see now here so i will go to the command command now kubectl right debug what i wanted to debug pod 1 which is this pod right and in interactive way yes up to here is clear hyphen hyphen image what image i wanted to uh, use i wanted to use ubuntu yes so here the first one is a busy box so let's say this is a production application now i am debugging by making a copy of it right no, without touching it so here i wanted to use a ubuntu why because i wanted to do some test or some debugging with this particular image so now i am taking a ubuntu here hyphen hyphen share hyphen processes it's a plural processes hyphen hyphen copy to so here the command copy to pod1 debug so what is the name i wanted to give first one is a pod1 right the pod1 so here i wanted to give say pod1 hyphen debug any name you can give and what is this container container if you specify the cont say pod1 did i specified a container name no automatically it will take it as a pod1 similarly if you wanted to specify an extra so now if i say enter what happens is it will create another pod with ubuntu image and it will share the process here share the process and you can do whatever P S A U X right now you will be able to see the uh, basically processes and here again the same I will repeat if you are Linux master then you will be able to debug from here now you are in a Ubuntu so all the uh, you will be able to uh, debug so that's a and I will go exit and I will cube ctl get pod here you will be able to see the two pods right and say uh, here go to cheat sheets. kubernetes cheat sheets i mean and just scroll down completely and here there is a command which is i can type but the thing is just for the easy kubectl get pod right and just paste this right so right pod 1 debug right so basically it's a copy paste and as well as attaching a ubuntu right here see pod 1 debug means exactly copy pasted and injected the another one right how safe it is so the second use case is here same as the first one but created a new pod and kubectl debug so in the kubectl attach this one you have specified in the yaml definition and right here like that we have specified for kubectl attach 
and this capabilities etc and you are and then these two were able to communicate each other but this debug is a, that's a beauty of this command still it's in a beta version yeah so now third one copy of a pod and change its command so let's see that what i will do is kubectl delete pod all force all pods will be deleted now kubectl get pod nothing is running at the moment now what i will do is so let's go to the slide yeah. so first i will create a one pod called a busy box simple and with a hyphen hyphen false what exactly i'll tell you kubectl uh, run say pod 2 i will specify hyphen hyphen image equal to say busy box right and hyphen hyphen say busy box 1.35 better and hyphen hyphen false see uh, here i am creating a busy box pod but just passing a command line as a false rather than sleep one day or some other command and i haven't specified any restart so to see the live scenario uh, in uh, what we see in the production now this pod is created with the, this command which is it not going to work kubectl get pod right crash loop back off yes why crash loop back off false command is does not make sense for it so part two right here this is a part two and if you look at the comma arguments just simply passing a false so system won't be able to understand this busy box so it's that's why it's a crash loop backup and we wanted to debug so let's consider this is a same production we wanted to debug now next is what you will do is here again you will use a kubectl debug command copy to the new pod name and you will specify the container name and then shell so here pod 2 right and this is a container right now so kubectl debug and pod 2 this is and interactive way iphone iphone copy hyphen 2 equal to pod to debug so just i given a different name and pod to debug and after that so whatever the pod to just copied to pod to then hyphen hyphen container and it's auto completion is enabled scan and then container and then equal to what's a container name is a pod only then hyphen hyphen sh so if i enter here then pod 2 debug will be created and right so and i'll go exit right now kubectl get pod now pod 2 debug will be created and pod to get pods hyphen if i run this see here here by using a kubectl debug i just used only the copy to only means here uh, sorry here pod 1 has the same container pod 2 by using a debug you are created a same but parameter is a just you pass the container is equal to app 1 whatever the name you can give this is a new container name so i given the my favorite name just simple pod 2 i given right here so that's why it was taken the uh, its name whatever i gave right and shell hyphen hyphen sh so here first pod is throwing error why because it's not able to understand this particular argument but whereas kubectl describe pod2 hyphen debug right this pod2 has a argument right so where is that yeah so it's basically its argument is already taken right uh, so shell so instead of the false it's not able to understand and it's a shell it's taken this command and it's working so that's how you can uh, troubleshoot basically um, kubectl get pod right uh, you can troubleshoot the pods containers by using kubectl debug still it's in a beta feature so um, just wait for a full version to come come here but meanwhile you can test this is a third one and a fourth one is basically copy of a pod change its image so how it will is uh, 
so again same you will be creating a one pod with a simple busy box right right uh, so here kubectl get pod i think pod 2 is running right so now what i will do kubectl delete pod i will just clean all so i don't want to keep anything and confuse okay right now i will create a one pod called a pod 1 kubectl run pod 1 and then right this is a restart equal to never sleep one day it's a simple busy box pod now it's pod is running right kubectl get pod right so here you are creating a copy of a pod which is this pod 1's copy by using a kubectl debug but here you are creating a new pod which is called a pod 1 hyphen debug with the ubuntu container wherever busy box is there so that is with the wild card character which is a star here so means this a pod 1 has a one container say pod 1 has a 10 containers so you are cloning pod 1 you are cloning to pod 1 hyphen debug but instead of specifying say this pod 1 has a one busy box one nginx and one uh, different different containers then you need to this command will be very big right so that's what the here the star will be useful right uh, i hope it's it's helpful so now kubectl debug and what i am debugging which is a pod one which is this guy and in interactive way and after that hyphen hyphen copy hyphen copy to see out bash if it is bash auto completion enable hyphen hyphen copy and uh, you tap right now what is a my pod one pod one hyphen debug is a my pod name which is this is the name right and after that simple hyphen hyphen set image so if you remember from the cka ckad for any deployment if you wanted to change the image you can change by using kubectl deployment uh, change image hyphen hyphen set image you can change the same command which will be useful here equal here and here the star you need to give the star equal to ubuntu so in the example i have taken a ubuntu so here also let's take an ubuntu and when i press enter then automatically the pod will be created how to verify that kubectl get pod oops now pod1 hyphen debug is created so how do i verify this image has a ubuntu kubectl pod hyphen see uh, this output right if you see this pod1 has a busy box 1.35 which is this guy then pod2 debug is a ubuntu i specified hyphen star equal to ubuntu that's what the i specified so i hope this is helpful now you can go inside so kubectl execute right iphone it and then pod1 debug and you do whatever because you have a exactly clone copy now you can do anything with this right so this is the uh, right now you are here right yeah so this is the way you can clone by using uh, basically its debug command this is the fourth one and the last is the, the most important uh, the use case is the so now kubectl delete pod all i deleted all now node this is a worker node or any node and this worker node you wanted to debug by injecting a some pod into the worker node is good right so here worker node you are injecting a ubuntu pod and you are debugging that means indirectly you are ssh into this particular node and you are debugging that's how beauty it is right so here kubectl get pod nothing is running at the moment simply i will run this particular command which is given here so kubectl debug so go here kubectl debug and a node slash what is the uh, yeah the before that i just wanted to show kubectl get node right and my worker node name is a node 01 uh, right so kubectl debug node slash node 01 my node 01 in interactive way and i wanted to debug with ubuntu image ubuntu right and then oh sorry i think i need to yeah sorry yeah 
so here what i am doing is here uh, i am going inside this particular worker node with the ubuntu pod so now indirectly i am in a this worker node like how do i ssh and all right uh, so this is way see this is a my worker node whole processes i can see and from here i can take it further say i wanted to know about this pid then i can use other linux commands to know kill or whatever i i can do whatever the process but i i logged in as a privileged user and say when i exit here right now clear and kubectl get pod right so here node debugger and which is a completed so kubectl describe pod and node debugger so let's this describe here so this pod name i just in the command i just specified only kubectl debug node node 01 in interactive way image with the ubuntu this ubuntu is injected and rest of the uh, things uh, it is uh, created right uh, so it has a completely access to the all the uh, basically as a privileged container it's accessed and it's whatever the but default mounts host uh, host root and as well as a service accounts the default service accounts and all it's mounted but it's a very useful this is the one of the third uh, use case uh, which we have seen in the the major three use cases right, right. so that's how you will be doing uh, so for kubectl debug point of view these are the three major use cases uh, uh, and currently it's in a beta version and by the way all the commands which i shared in this particular uh, particular link with all the examples here so here so sorry in this particular link right so and all the examples are here debugging and debugging with a copy of a pod and debugging with the while changing its command and debugging change container images and shell on a node so these are the uh, examples are given and currently still in it is in the beta version you go to the kubernetes enhancement and this is the enhancement and you can read the documentation still it's under the beta version uh, please note once again and if you want feel you can just raise the issue but these are the three major purposes of the kubectl debug i hope you like it let me know what you guys feel uh, just comment it what you guys think about this future thank you bye bye